Hi, everybody. Angie here. Coming on to start a new project with you. <clears throat> I wanted to do a little fun little make, kind of a little trifold little um, a piece. I don't really know what you want to call it. I kind of, in my mind, have um, what I want to do, but um, don't really know what you want to, really what you really want to call it. Um, I found some, I was sorting through some papers, and I found some pretty pieces that I thought might work well together. They're kind of um, some vintage, I guess you would call them kind of vintage, shabby chic, uh, Edwardian lady pieces, kind of a mixture of um, patterns. You see some, um, and some of them I kind of don't like the, um, the color, the way they came out printed. I mean, they're kind of a little bit too... I don't know. Um, and I've been sitting on them for a while. And I don't know if it's my printer or if that's the way they should have came out. But I don't know. I don't like the the color palette too well. And I've been sitting on these prints for a while. But I said, you know what? I thought this project, it would be good um, to go ahead and use them up. Because um, the idea that I have... For the most part, a lot of it's going to be covered up. You're just going to see hints and bits and pieces of the paper anyway. So I thought it'd be a good uh, choice to use some of these up. So anyway, that's my choice here. And then I had this um, piece of envelope mailer. And I was going to use it as a uh, journal cover or a signature cover. And I had folded it in half so I could fit it in my drawer and I was measuring. I was like, oh, that's a good size for, you know, like a journal cover or something. So I tucked it away and then I pulled it back out because it was near these papers. And I was like, well, that'll work for this project because it's not too thick. It's um, good weight, good size. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Now this particular piece of paper is a little over 12 a little over nine and a half. So I think that might be a little bit big. Um, so 12. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, actually, I think probably nine would be good in size. In height, should I say. Nine would probably be good in height. So let's choose nine inches. And then, and I'm just trying to get straight edges because I don't know how straight this is. Okay, and then if we do 12, I think 12 would be good. Stick with um, even numbers. Let's see. I'm just going to put a little tick mark there so I know where 11 is and then bring it up to there. Okay. So that should be 12. Okay, so we just took off just a little bit. That'll be 9 by 12. All right. So I was thinking... Um, something of a trifold and now I got to figure out where I want my folds to be so it's 12 inches so I could do four four and four but I think I want to do Rather than four, four, and four, I think I want to do the middle one to be the largest. So I want that to say maybe four and a half. And then these ones to be maybe like three and three quarters, just a little bit smaller so they kind of um, don't quite meet in the middle. Yeah. Just kind of off center, just for something different. Okay, so let's get my folds in place and then we can start covering it. 
and it'll be okay with this fold once I um once we get it covered on both sides, it will strengthen that, so that won't be a problem. I don't think. Okay. Alrighty, and I'm just gonna reinforce those before we start covering it. this on the inside because I think I like the fact of this color this the brown um, then I don't have to worry about um, having my paper meet I can just kind of leave a little bit of an edge and I think I might even like that look and then on the back side I'm thinking about possibly doing a fabric um, cover I'm not sure we'll see how it goes okay so let's um, what I want to do is think about combining these t first three pages. But see, that comes into a problem because the pages, paper is not the height. So should I bring it down to or should I turn my pages this way? Which the patterns on the paper are not too bad. I actually think that this will be okay um, if I okay so let's cut our pieces and I think I do want them just to have a slight, I don't want to butt them all the way up. I just want it to be a slight, you know, just and then I'll allow a little bit of inking and, you know, just a little bit of an edge, just a slight bit. So you can see a hint of that background there. So if I do that, I'm going to just flip it over and do like so, and then we can cut that piece out. Bring in my ruler. from the line, slightest bit. Not even a sixteenth of an inch, just a hair. Okay. Let's check that. Okay, that's fine. It should fit the other one. So if it does, we can just use this 
and cut the other one out. Yep. Okay, so I think what I want to do is even though I cut up that cage there, I'll do something to cover that up. Um, and I like that butterfly, so we'll go ahead and see if we can save that. And we'll go ahead and cut that out like that. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. So how is everyone doing today? I hope everyone's well. In good spirits. I am doing well. Always a good time when we're in our craft rooms and creating pretty things and enjoying our hobbies. In our, our craft. Okay, so not too bad. We used quite a bit of that paper. Okay. So, since we only have two of these panels, maybe we can offset these. Something like that. That would look okay. Yeah. And then we can do this one, since we already have a bird cage, even though I'm going to get a piece of it regardless. All right, we'll go this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is trace that out. These pieces, maybe they can come in handy for something. bad. Just got a piece of that um, cage on that portion. So let's see where. Okay. Don't want the paper to interfere with our folds. So that's good there. And I'm gonna use snail tape on this project just for the sake of the video. I like when I can use something other than glue all the time. glue, I mean your tape, all the way to the edge because you do not want your, you know, your edge is coming up, you know, and that's with your glue as well. You always want to make sure your ends are, a good thing about using your tape, you can run your finger over if you have any overage of your tape and go like so and get those little bits up. They come up really easy. And you don't even have to use a firm hand, really. Just kind of do a little rub, and it comes right up. I call them glue bo um, tape boogers. <laughs> and just rub them right away. Okay. So there's that one. That's good. I 
right. Okay, I like that. This one down. Okay, good. So I grabbed two tape runners because you never know when it's going to stick on me. You get kind of jammed from time to time. Not that it's a big deal, but when you're on camera, it can be a little cumbersome, a little time consuming. Okay, got that one, not bad. I like offsetting those, that those kind of things helps the patterns a little bit. Position my papers, make sure everything's nice and straight. Thing about your tape, you gotta make sure your paper's in place because once it's down, it's down. You don't have any wiggle room when you're working like what you do when you're working with your wet glue. So that's why I'm just really making sure I have everything in place. Just check, make sure there's no tape. There's a little piece right there. Okay, not too bad. That's a good base. All right. Now let's bring in some ink to our edges. And I can think about what my next position is going to be Yeah, see, I like that brown. That's why I wanted a little bit of that brown to show through. Works well with the vintage photo. Okay. And it could actually go either way. Okay, make that the top. All right, now what I was thinking was one side have some pockets well, a lot of pockets, but um, I think since I'm right-handed, we'll do the pockets on this side. I was thinking have a 
a set of three pockets on this side, maybe a couple pockets on this side, and a nice big pocket in the middle. And I think we'll start in the middle, since that's the easiest one, because I think I have an idea what I want to do there. And what I was thinking was make a nice decorative envelope, put a nice envelope in the middle, and make it a tuck spot uh, pocket in the back. So let's start there, and um, let me pick one of these digitals that I want to use for the envelope. Let's see. Um, maybe that one. Maybe some of that when I flip over the flap. It will um, show a little bit hint of that. So we've got an area of what four and a half inches. So the pocket needs to be about four inches. So let me grab my envelope punch board and let's see what our measurement needs to be. Um, so say we want Let's just go with a three by four. If you guys aren't familiar with the envelope punch board, it gives you the exact measurements of what your envelope size should be if you know what you want it to be. So like, say I want my envelope to be a three by four, it gives you the measurements. You need a six by six inch paper and it tells you where to score and mark your paper. So we need our paper to be six by six. So let's cut this piece down to six by six. And I do want to try and save that part. So we're going to cut it on this side. Six by six. Save our pieces. Okay, let's bring our envelope punch board back in. Now, it says to, got to hold it up so I can see. Score and mark on the two and five inch, inch line. So we butt our paper up against the bridge there and we come up to the two and five inch, inch mark, line our paper up on that line, we punch and we score. And that's not gonna work because the picture is right in the middle, but that's okay. Okay, let's get a good score. Okay, then we turn. And then that's where this little score line, this little mark comes in. We're gonna line that up with the score, first score line that we made. Again, butting it up against the wall there. And then we score, punch, I'm sorry, punch it, and make a score line. Do the same thing all the way around. Put it up against the wall. Use that score line, line it up with that tick mark. Punch. And score. And one more time. Line it up with the tick mark. Punch. And that just takes the pressure off you, makes things easy. Come in really handy. And we've got ourselves an easy peasy envelope. Okay, well I was hoping the flower, I guess I could have um, figured it out if I would have taken more time, but it's not a big deal. Let's see. Um, just to have a little bit of an element peeking out, maybe do we want the key? Portion of the key sticking out. Or... And that 
comes right to the edge, doesn't it? Doesn't interfere. Hmm. Wondering if it should be just a tad smaller. Let me look at that. Might have to use that for something else and make a smaller one. Next smaller one is a three by three and a half. kind of feeling like I want a little smaller one there. So let's, um, I'll use that envelope for something else. Let me tuck that away in my old cubby there. And let me choose another paper. I'm not really. We'll do that one. Okay. So bring our envelope punch board in. We want to go with the three by three and a half. So it says our paper size needs to be five and three fourths round. So let's cut another one. scored it two and five eighths again. So we're going to do the same process. Let's see what we want our top piece to be. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I'd, I'd rather it be nestled inside. Okay, I think I'll have it sitting this way. So we'll use a little wet glue on this one. Now for this, um... I was thinking of something along the lines of putting this down along three sides and having a pocket here as well as opening it, opening it and having a tuck spot and a pocket there. So let's ink that up and put that down.
And do I want to line the liner? Put a liner in there, or do I want to leave it blank? I think I'm okay with leaving it blank. Okay. So let's put that down. I think I'll bring that almost to the middle, but not quite. So we got to allow for the opening of the envelope. Center that, and down we go. Okay. Very good. All right. So we've got a tuck spot there. All right, now on this side, I was thinking something along the lines of a, maybe putting a notepad in there and then a little tuck spot there. So, do I wanna use a bit of this paper? thinking maybe I think I'll bring in we'll cut that right about at the words and make a little tick mark or I need to trim it here. There. Then I wanted to have an additional pocket, I think. I think I want to do an additional pocket here. So, all right, let's get this trimmed down. I'm gonna take it one step at a time. Tick mark there. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. So I was going to have a slot there and then I want to have another piece here maybe do a little a little pocket on top here so what pattern do we want to use maybe this one 
That'll look nice. Okay. So let's turn that down. And we could probably just do our scissors on this one. Like you can see. And hold it straight. Actually, bring that up higher if I wanted to, and I may do that. Kind of change as we go. Let's see. I kind of like that there. A little bit higher. Okay. And then, just to make it look a little softer and feminine, I'm thinking... Hmm... Thought. I'm thinking just to have a decorative flap there. A doily would look nice as well. But I don't have a doily handy. Let's see. Let me take a look. One second, guys. have some white doilies and I think white would look really nice too. Let's see how that would look. Look better if I back it on something, huh? Let's see. No. Okay, I like that look, but I think white would look better just to brighten this up. We've got a lot of colors going on and I don't know where my white doilies are. So on the next video, I don't want to keep you guys held up. I'm going to look for my white doilies and we will put a white edge on there. I think that would look really cute. Okay, that's what we're going to do on there. So we'll finish that page up on tomorrow's video. So we're going to have a pocket there. We're going to have a slot there. We got a pocket there, so we've got to decorate this. And I want to do a three tier pocket for some tags on this side. Now, we've got one, two, three, four. Hmm, maybe, because I just was thinking. Isn't she really pretty? And then I just have this. Cut her out. I think I want to do that. Let's see. I think I want 
to use this paper, but use it in pieces. So I like these flowers too, so I may be able to incorporate these flowers in here. So I think I wanna cut her out. Something like this. Isn't that pretty? do that. Then let me grab my, my little small Gemini for this piece. And I'm just going to take you through step by step, guys, with me. So there's that. And my gem, very loved Gemini plate here. Let's see, is that going to be too big? We might be able to get that through. Let's see. It's going to be close. Just try to position that. It's going to be real close from where I cut it. Okay. Very nice. Okay. I think I want to cover up that butterfly. I think I want to put her there. And I think I want a fussy cut. So for tomorrow, we'll finish this up, okay, on the next video. And um, I think this is a good stopping point. But I think I want to put her there. I will find my white doilies. We'll be able to finish up this side, get it decorated. And I think I want to do some fussy cutting. I'll do that off camera. I think I want to bring in some of these flowers down here. I'm going to fussy cut these pink roses out. Maybe even the pink butterflies will use that. I'll even cut out this butterfly. Maybe we can incorporate that somewhere. I'm not sure, but it's good to have just in, just in case because I don't know where my mind's going to go. So we'll stop there and we will continue on the next video, okay? Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I will see you on the next video. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.